G'day folks, Jason Nick here on the Utter Farm. We've got a few head of cattle here we've got to move into the next cell. Then we'll be heading out to the Utter Farm where we've got four, four calves that are due for their 7-1 vaccination. Two of them are bully calves which are going to band. And we've got a heap of fly tags, buffalo fly tags, which have got to be pulled out because they're past their use-by date. We'll head out now once we move these girls and get stuck into it. Before I set up this next cell here, we'll go through and have a look what they've done. So I've got two head of cattle, normally I'll run six. So they've been here just under three times the amount of time. You can still graze and get the same effect with less cattle. You've just got to give them more time. So if you have a look through here, a lot of this is still a foot high. Over in that corner there, there's a lot of foxtail grass, similar to what's up against the fence, which is about, oh, about 1.8 high. A lot of this in here is about 1.5 high, which is roughly the end of that four foot. So this is it here. And it gets really stemmy. It's one of the first things that grows. You give me a long enough and they chew the stem. If you move them out too early, they'll leave the stem because they'd sooner go for the Back down there, the creeping blue in the roads grass, which is easier to digest. Because we've had them in here, I think it's just under two days now. See, look, they laid a lot of this down. So what that does, like I keep saying, that's adding that thatch layer and little bank to the ground. Not only does it slow on the velocity of rain, we've had copious amounts of rain of late, but also when it breaks down, there's a bit from last time, it decays. You're adding that organic matter back to the soil. You're feeding the soil microbes. And also you're building up the soil level, organic matter, once it does break down. And this is the area they'll be going into next. So I'll be setting up that cell. A lot of that's creeping blue, roads grass, a bit of serrazzo down there, and there's foxtail grass just there. So I'm happy with this graze. We'll move them out. The reason why I've only got two in here and not six at the moment is because we're slowing them down because this grass isn't, it's stalling in growth because we're getting into the colder weather. So we're just, giving it through, running them through to get these heeds heads and that chew down to activate the growth of this plant for the last bit of growth we got before winter hits us. This grass is up to the bottom of my pants. Pants are getting all wet. I've got single pluggers on. And single pluggers aren't really ideal for doing what I'm doing because my feet are slipping around. I'm gonna have a blowout in a minute. I have got my galoshes in the, in the back of the ute, but I've done this a few times and it's been so wet and the water runs down your leg into your galoshes and then all of a sudden you're slopping around in water for the rest of the time you've got those galoshes on and it makes it uncomfortable and we probably going to be a couple of hours out there so you can see a lot of this is up to under my, under my armpits at the moment so i'm going to put it on the top level of these step-ins i want to try and keep the grass growth off the hot wire if i can because that's drains energy from the unit. Because we've had a lot of rain of late, the unit's just got charged up again now. And the last thing we want to do is suck any more energy and then have low voltage on this wire. So by keeping it high, I normally don't have it high. I normally have it on the second, second one from the top. The only time I really have it high is like this instance now when I've got this grass that's so high or we've got calves. It's handy when you've got calves to go on that top the top run of these Wade Bryan step-ins because then the calves can walk out of that underneath that hot, hot wire when they want to. They don't got to stay amongst the herd when you're high density grazing. That's about the only two times I use the very top. And you'll notice because I'm coming on straight onto the hot wire between two posts here, that reel's heavy and it drags that wire down. I like to use an O'Brien step-in to support that weight as well. I'll grab the one from up the top here once I move them and I'll put it on the other side. So lock that bit on that picket. I might get away with just using one here. I'll just lay it back. Yep, that'll do the job. Go back now and check this wire. What we plan doing on the other farm when we're going to lay it out, because it's a lot bigger property than this, is you drive the quad across. What I'm doing now is laying some of this grass down. It's underneath that hot wire, because it's directly hitting that wire. And like I said, it drains the energy. When you're in a quad and you go on that forward motion, the quad automatically, the grass goes underneath that quad and lays this grass down for you. All right, come on, girls. Come on, girls. Come on, girls.
Good girl. Come on, 121. Good boy. Good boy. You don't realize the amount of time we spend in just moving water to every cell. It all adds up. We've got to join the hoses together. We've got to move the tubs. It's all time consuming. That's why we set up the watering system out there on the other farm. Basically, we're going to have water on tap through the whole property. Every cell is going to have one of those pop-ins, pull off the cap on the ground, snap in the, the pipe which runs onto a water trough with floats that we can drag along with a quad, snap it in, fills it up. That'll do two cells. I'll be in like, like I've got it now. Graze in this cell, move over, graze in that cell. That's why we like to put the tubs on both sides, half and half. It's only every one day that we've got to move them because here we move them twice a day every 12 hours. So that does a 12 hour period that we're going to move them around the property. Not only that, we're going to have sheep and chickens following up behind the livestock. So if we've got to cart water to one lot of livestock, then we're going to have water for the sheep and then further back water for the chickens. They'll just be constantly dragging water around. We don't want to have a trailer with an IBC container, a thousand litres of water on it and constantly filling up out of the river. So that's why we sent up the watering system the way it is. So whatever paddock we're in, we just snap into the ground and we got water on tap basically and hose to fill up all the watering system. Come on. Come on, in we go. Let's go. Good boy. Good. Let's go. Good girls. Good girls. Good girls. Good girls. Good girl. 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 Good Good girl. Good girl. that bolt right here put timber behind it so I can do that ears tag there you go doll good girl good girl good girl good girl hey it's enough out of you you got shitty come on that's it you gonna move that timber down Come on down, let you come. Right, I will see if we can take this ear tag out. This is a buffalo fly one. Yep, it's gone. We'll let her out now. Come on, darling, let you come. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, we'll just try and chase him. He might turn down here. No, if you mightn't get him back in, there he goes. He's turning there anyway. Do it a half corner. Keep coming down on him, though. Coming down on him. In worst case, put the boards in if he gets past the boards. I 
I'll go down, chase him up, put the boards in. Come on, Luca. Come on, that way. Come on. Put the boards in. So this little fella's gonna get the work. He's gotta get, he hasn't got a tag to come out, but we've gotta give him his first seven and one, and we've gotta band him as well. So the poor little bugger, the only thing we're not doing is horning. We used to horn our bully calves, but because he's using him for meat anyway, we're not gonna put him through that pain because he won't make two years old anyway, and we'll probably end up processing him before then. So we're not dehorning, we're just doing the banding and giving him his seven and one injection. I'll tell you what, he's got a solid rump on him. I can't get my legs around his, his backside, that's for sure. We had to straddle him halfway down his back. Rightio, so now we're going to get him. So with these, we want to give him as high as you can on the top of neck, behind their ears. So pinch their skin straight in, 2.5 mil out. Make sure you soothe that area too. Give it a rub and help spread that in. That way you try and eliminate that lump on the surface. Helps move the fluid. Right, oh, that's done. Time to time for a band him. So what we're doing now is I'm getting my cousin to hold his hold his tail up his back a bit. That sort of paralyzes him for moving. Now I'll get down behind him. It's pretty hard to do it by yourself with the tail because it gets down there between there. You find that sort of paralyzes him a little bit. I've got the band ready, now I'm gonna go down. Oh, you wouldn't read about it. Check out that. Of all days, it just broke the banding handle on my gun. See, the his lucky day. I oh, know. Oh, of all days. No, that, that runs that. Yeah, that arm. Oh, you've got to be joking. Type of thing you can do by hand either, as in stretch them. Oh, this is good. You've got to be joking. You have all days. You know what? I think he might be saving grace. He's got to come back for his second lot of seven and ones in four to six weeks anyway. So, you know what? I think he might be living another day. Keep Wouldn't read about it, would you? Castings. Clearly snapped. As you can see, that activates one of these pins that opens up. So when I open it now, it's just stretching out. It's not actually flaring out where I need it to. Of all days to break, it just wasn't meant to be. We'll let him out. Uh, yeah, is that one? Yeah, solid ass end. Good girls, come on, way we go. Have some new friends to say. Yeah. Way we go. Good, Good girls. girls. Good girls. Hey, that's got a body with a full isn't he? See what you're He's solid in he's solid in the back. Yeah. Like I said, for it's cross between it's cross between Drowdy and Bazaday and a bit of South Devon. You have your good days and your bad days. When we left the trial property here this morning, everything was okay. But obviously out in the other farm, it's one of those days, you just some you get those days that nothing works out well. We couldn't get the needle to prime first for the seven in one. We weren't sure whether there's a little pin hole in one of the lines or whether the O-ring in the gasket was gone in the gun, but it would not prime itself. You physically had to push the bottle to get the air out to force it into the gun. And if that wasn't bad enough, my dad's two cows wouldn't come in. We gave her seven and one, oh, 
six weeks ago and they were due for their second lot. So they didn't bring their calves in, so we couldn't do them. And as you've seen, as for the bully calf, we got his seven in one finally done, but then we couldn't put the bands around his genitals. So we've got to bring him back in six weeks' time to give him his seven and one, his second injection. So hopefully I'll buy a new gun by then and we'll get it done. But you take the good with the bad. You have really good days and sometimes you have bad days. But now it's going to be a good day. I've got my kids around and I've got both my grandkids here having a barbecue. I've made some smash burgers out of that fresh mince that I that harvest or the processing we just recently did. Got some nice grass-fed sausages and a bit of steak. So in about, just got the onions on now, so in about 20 minutes time, hopefully a good hamburger will fix it. Anyway guys, I hope you have a good morning, a terrific afternoon, and an awesome evening. Wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later.